I'm pulling through, bitches. Oh. Sorry, legit didn't mean that. Sorry. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Quickly, yes, I know episode 2 is out, but I'm covering only one this time because the first time I covered this show, I only covered one episode. I get it, so we'll get there. Hello, and welcome back to Wish for Death Island Population Me. Today, today we have our regular hellscape back on the menu. Batwoman is back. Some people say it's worse than ever. Now that I've seen the first episode, I agree. Everyone that I follow has covered this already, and I really want to watch their videos, but I said no, because I want to cover it with fresh eyes for all of you fuckers, so you better be grateful. Anyway, last season of this brilliant show, ended with Alice, the shitty Joker knockoff, killing her stupid friend and making a face pancake for the weird doctor dude so he looks like Bruce Wayne. Oh, and uh, gay. Gay. I hate the series, but I admit I do have a soft spot for it because with my covering of it, so many new people came to this island and we have so many memes from it, yet the show is inevitably going to keep doing its zombie shamble until the end of time and that, uh, that terrifies me a bit. But I can't complain because this is video fodder for me. Who am I kidding? All I do is complain. Let's go. Ruby Rose, the block of wood playing Kate Kane, has left the show because she had an accident and there was some shitty stuff going on on set. It turns out when you have a really bad premise, the writers and the crew are also shitty. But she is replaced by the slightly less block of wood actress. Alas, all of the advantages that we might have from this person not being as bad of an actress are stripped away by the dialogue. The very first thing that we've got is this image. This promo image. It looks worse than an intentionally bad cosplay, and believe me, those can get pretty uh, interesting. She looks... constipated? Also, we've got this thing about the creator wanting you to know she's black, and this is going to be particularly annoying for me throughout the season because whenever a minority gets brought up, they try to get all personal and preachy. Uh, not a fun thing because of the, you know, you should like the show it was made for you kind of thing. I don't like this show, it's bad. Plus, isn't it the dumbest thing ever when you as a superhero want to stay as more of a symbol and um, anonymous person, yet you're constantly now making yourself look vulnerable because you, you're obsessed with people knowing that it's you in the suit? I... Uh. Anyway, let's have a look at this trailer. Fucking twinkle twinkle little star starts playing and we get shots of people crying. It needs a hero. It needs a Batwoman. Really, I think they're better off without her. I don't want to give up hope that Kate's alive. Kate is Batwoman. I know, I hate it. Give me a chance. You do something to fuck up, you die. There's the chance. Or the person you're trying to save dies. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty big deal. Then again, even being slightly more competent than Kate means that you're gonna be better than her, so, uh, okay. Why is she changing in there? She changes in the bathroom. Is this Batwoman gonna have AIDS? Don't kill me, but I made some alterations. To what, the suit? She's so smart, she can do that shit without Luke's help. She doesn't have Kate privilege. Alice is planning something big. Can we not get Alice to fuck everything up? Can we just get her to be, like, out of one episode? Just one? I just want her to leave. I still hate her. My boiling hatred just flared up as soon as I saw her on screen. I met the new girl. She's gonna be a handful. Can you not? Can you just not? Please. Time to be powerful. Of course she has to announce that she is powerful because she can't show it and you just have to believe it. And then there's some dude in like a daft punk music video. Uh, okay, let's let's watch the ep- Why am I doing this? There's a flashback to the worst parts of season one. Oh shit. It opens with this minivan by the river. There's this like crazy plant lady who has a plant that's uh, like has a seatbelt because she's crazy. And this is Ryan Wilder who lives in a trailer by the river and looks like a crazy cat lady without the cats. She has a flashback to her mom and her moving into a new apartment, making remarks to show that they're poor and the girl is gay. Fancy. And your little girlfriends are having an easier time sneaking in and out now. Are you ready for a new life? Mm -hmm. She's dead, isn't she? But yes, in the first minutes of the show we have a scene where she announces that she's gay because that is the most important trait in the show and must be said immediately. Then she wakes up and a fucking plane pieces rain from the sky. Did not just see that. No, just go back to sleep. Then the series will end. The plane crashing 
believe it or not, looks cheaper than anything in season one. Then we cut to Asian, who is casually talking about how there are plane parts raining down from the sky, and they're worried because Kate hasn't responded to any of their messages. Worried, I should say they look like they don't care at all, while the music and the dialogue make you think that they should be worried. I guess Lizard replaced everyone in Gotham. Alex Jones was right. Ryan finds some dead dude and has a flashback, while Asian says, What about calling her old school, bat signal? Y you mean... You mean the primary way to call her is old school? I guess to you, but you never had to call it that way, did you? Ryan fucking screams a very familiar line. <laughs> while trying to save the dude that she finds, just, you know, lying there from the crash. Just let him die, he probably doesn't want to be here. And this is what Kate does too, when she was trying to get information out of the weird skin dude. Is this just a universe where people say live really loudly while they're trying to bring someone back to life? She also says the same thing in a flashback where she, her mom is dying. Again, is this just something that they do? Is she a sim? Side note, you want to know how really shitty days in Australian summer make me go crazy? We had a heat wave recently and I've been watching lore videos on The Sims. You want me to tell you about Bella Goth being taken by an alien and losing her memory in Strangeville? Cause I can. Okay, okay, fine, we'll keep talking about Batwoman. After saving said dude, she says that he's gonna be okay and then immediately abandons him there in the wreck. And then she just kind of stands there. It cuts to her standing and it looks like she's standing in the same place. Therefore, he is below her. So when she throws up, because she, you know, just does that, it looked to me like she was throwing up onto him because she didn't move, classy. But when we zoom out, he isn't there, so it just looks like he teleported to me, even though she's standing in the same place. This is all intercut with Luke and Asian trying a few things to find Kate. Well, Luke is trying things. Asian is calling Kate over and over and then screaming at random shit. Then Ryan magically finds the suit and it just picks it up perfectly fine. What? They tease it to make it look like Kate might be dead in the suit before Ryan actually picks it up, but it just looks so deflated that it's... I don't know what they're going for. Oh, but hey, we get the theme song! This dude is telling Jacob that he can't just run into the crash site, and he just repeatedly tells him that. Then Black Lightning shows up and says, we'll look together, and then just goes with him and the sky doesn't even say anything. Is he even looking at them anymore? Is he having a NAM flashback? And then Alice is just standing there. I, I hate this bitch. Apparently no one can find the suit or Kate, and they go bump into Bruce Wayne. Casually. No one has emotions that humans feel in this show. It's complicated, it's fine. We're smart. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That sounds like a Panic at the Disco song. A bad one. They ask him once where he's been. Once. He says some non-answer, and then they drop it immediately and just go off doing their own thing. Luke doesn't even question it besides later when he gets all pissy about how he was left alone and he doesn't really question where Bruce has been or why he's different. Ryan says, I stumbled on something pretty sick. Kind of game changer. To someone who's looking after her, after her criminal charge. That doesn't sound suspicious at all to say, especially since you were busted for drugs. But her case manager asks about housing and employment because that's what's actually important. And this bitch gets mad and says that she's innocent all along because the police are dirty and she can't find a job because she is the definition of powerless. She is apparently looking for a dojo to hire her. Surely you can get some gas station job or something first and rough it out to pay your court fines before going to do that. Did you even try? You're acting like it's the hardest thing in the world when you're just currently gunning for a job that you really want instead of one that you need for now. Blonde and Black Lightning sit down to have a ex exposition conversation about how they were tailed by someone so the plane must have been tampered with. The dialogue is awful, I keep saying that but it is. You showed me photographs of us being tailed by some mysterious woman named Sophia. Jacob is acting with his hands and he's very upset. Then Asian comes in. They shit talk the paramedics and medical personnel because the medical personnel told him Alice was dead all those years ago. How is this happening all over again? 
Look how poetic it is that Alice and Kate are basically the same person because it's just like the Joker and the Batman, it's not forced at all. Bruce lets slip that he knows about Alice and Kate and Luke decides to have a tantrum about being ignored by him all these years but doesn't also fucking get suspicious that he knows things that he shouldn't know. Bruce continues giving known answers. Luke is never the sharpest tool in the shed but he is being dumbed down so much more than he usually is. Especially with each new female character being introduced, this is just a stark reminder that this character is nothing and it's tragic. Plus, fake Bruce, who is playing up being a dumbass and acting different because the audience needs to notice that he's different, is going unnoticed by anyone, so it in the actual show. He also seems to not know where anything is, so it looks even worse. It it feels like he just stepped out for a smoke for five minutes, not five years. Luke knows about the skin face people as well, like last season was entirely about him trying to fucking figure out how people are trying to pretend to be other people and everything, but he just assumes Bruce is Bruce without checking at all, even though he was almost killed multiple times because of Alice and her weird skin face thing. But in the theme of last season, everyone walks into the building when Whenever they want so it doesn't matter. Bruce then fucking fawns over the weapons and continues being fucking suspicious. Luke shows the green shit to him and they recap the idea that it was bad for the suit because kryptonite is the weakness of Batman and, and that's the thing. Then he takes it from Luke and only now notices that the suit is gone. Do you have impaired vision? Did Alice take your brain out when she put the face on? It's the biggest centerpiece in the section of the room that you're in and you didn't notice that it was gone. Ryan puts the suit on in a public bathroom. While she has flashbacks of being beat up and she announces that she's powerful while dubstep plays in a public bathroom. Time to be powerful. There's these random juggalos just chillin' and then she pops up and says hello. They wonder what the fuck is going on, rightfully, and they drag her down and for a split second I was hoping that she was going to get her ass kicked and make this a thing about how she needs to actually earn and learn for the suit. But no, she gets up and does a bad fight scene. Again, worse than season one. And she's flawless and gets them all beat up. Thing is, yes, we know she has some fighting history because she's looking for a dojo to be a part of, but like, sh she doesn't know how to fight in the suit. She can at least make a few mistakes, right? Why is she perfect? She plays around with the suit while they stand there and watch her until she just stabs them. And Luke is like, oh my god, it must be Kate because the suit's on. I'm pulling through bitches! Oh, sorry, legit didn't mean that. So the voice mask sounds so fucking bad. Is it just me or is she putting on more of an accent whenever she's in the suit? Bruce is just fucking some thoughts. And the music is really bad, seriously. I'm taking one He's also just being incredibly obvious that it's it's not actually Bruce. Alice comes in, because of course, and says he nailed the voice but he's not doing anything but enjoying himself and they need to focus on their goal. Is it just me or does she sound so much more like she's doing an, a Joker impression? You? Caught in his crosshairs. <laughs> his own daughter! Tommy then makes fun of Alice for mourning her sister because she wanted to kill her but Tommy says that shooting her was the easy way out and Alice gets mad because she didn't want to shoot Kate, she wanted to have Jacob kill her and then realize that he killed her because he hates Batwoman or something. One of the thoughts comes down and Alice just fucking kills her. Tommy's mad because like why the fuck did you do that? You're gonna draw suspicion and she just kind of chews him out. How is she supposed to be some killer that no one can find and she's doing stuff as stupid as this? Does Bruce not have any staff for this place that might notice that he's here and Alice is here and the people he fucks couldn't tell anyone that they fucked Bruce or anything because they walked around freely he doesn't really care she she calls herself crazy and he, he calls her crazy I was tethered to reason Bruce lame on what? for wanting to live in the manor and she goes off on a tangent about being insane she's going to tell on him because she's stupid and if he doesn't go along with her she's gonna reveal his secret to everyone that's Alice, alright. Black Lightning goes to stand in Kate's old bar and smell her clothing. Blonde shows up because she needs to check the safe, because Kate told her that if she ever went missing, Blonde would have to go and find the specific safe. She can't tell anyone about it though, not even Black Lightning, so Black Lightning is kind of offended and walks out. Asian and Luke follow Ryan into the sewers. They find out that she's not Kate and she immediately reveals her identity, just on the spot, then points out that Kate stole it from Bruce in the first place, so why are they getting on her case? That's fair. You don't know the first thing about KK. Ryan gives them a speech about her blackness and flies away. She fucking talks about privilege for minutes. 
and does that entire thing about like black people and they just stand there and don't do anything while she monologues like an anime villain hopped up on BuzzFeed. In the sewer. I if you want to act like you're better than me, don't do it in the sewer. Of a black woman who died during childbirth, 10 months for a crime I didn't commit. You have not seen justice. <laughs> Bruce is just standing there waiting for Jacob. Jacob isn't very surprised, but he also gets angry, and Bruce says Alice is in his house. Blonde is not surprised either, and they hug, and it's fine, but she's the only one who gets suspicious afterwards because she is a woman and woman power. Ryan then turns off the GPS because she automatically knows how to work that in the suit. She just knows how the suit works, all the, all the things. She also talks to her pop plant about how she hates these rich folks. Don't look at me like that. Uh, wait a minute, this is juicy. Okay, that's kind of badass. Relatable plant conversation, wow. Listen, I, I have a succulent, his name's Dio. Like, I, I get it, plants are cool, but I don't talk to him. Also, the GPS is just one random button on the side of the suit. Like, how do you know what's there? Has it ever been turned off accidentally? Each of the groups have, like, this intercut conversation about each of the protagonists, aka how privileged Kate is compared to Ryan and Ryan was so poor and moved in and out of foster homes and you should pity her. Somehow Asian does this thing again where she talks about their entire life story from her laptop as if like she's reading from the wiki. Also, Ryan hates Kate at first because Kate is privileged but then she finds out Kate's a lesbian and she's like, oh cool, never mind. Ryan's mom died because of Alice's gang of squatter people. Yeah, motivation, I guess. Am I doing wearing the suit of a hero when I couldn't even save you? Because you have a motive now and you're gonna come back and be all shitty and snarky even though you don't really care about it that much because this is CW. They just keep making it about how sorry you should feel for her and how strong she is. And then Kate is finally presumed dead by Luke, who blames himself when they all get sorry for each other and start crying. Asian once again says that they didn't do anything wrong and they treat Kate like Jesus. Then Ryan turns the GPS on for them and to come get the suit because she's guilty, which is just one button on the side. Meanwhile, Blonde says that Bruce didn't understand her made-up information when they had the conversation and now she knows that he is a fake. She also took prints from the cup in Jacob's office and managed to find out that it's Tommy. Then they explain the exposition about his plan and recap the entire last season. Did Tommy not think that they were going to get suspicious? It seems like whenever someone wears a face and they die, the body isn't looked at and no DNA is matched or found to be different from the mask and the mask wearer. No one has ever looked at the face and been like, hey, do I see that that's not really a face? They, they don't check the bodies at all, this is surreal. Luke has another tantrum while Asian explains his own emotions to him. And if the miracle arrival of Bruce Wayne could help find her, then why question it? Tommy blows up the cave with his magic gun and finds the car. Luke then explains Tommy is going to find the suit. Some lullaby is being played, Jacob turns up at the, the manor and he asks about Kate. Alice is even more annoying than before. She also goes on another guilt trip and says that Kate is Batwoman and he doesn't believe her. Luke then contacts Ryan and they have a funny little chase scene while Tommy sings in his car and races up to Ryan. She wants to drop the suit out the damn window and they tell her not to. Brilliant hero. Luke didn't even know the bat car was in the cave, but he suddenly knows what the, what to do and he hacks the car. He hacks the car. I'm in. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He actually said that. I'm having non flashbacks again. Holy shit. There is no god in this world. Who's what what cosmic terror is this? They used the default Instagram comedy video sound. Let me play it again. No. Then Ryan has the suit on, magically, and tries fighting him. I, I hate this music. I'm going to die from this music. Stop the dubstep! <laughs> He also grabbed the plant at some point. Why did he grab it just to smash it on the door? I, I guess that was the objective? Ryan. Come in. Ryan. Then some quirky music plays while they're talking about how Tommy is going to Arkham. And yeah, it, it just skips everything completely and just says that they got Tommy and he's going to Arkham. 
They also got the car back before the cops found it, so the cops don't know anything about the Batmobile. Asian says that she should give Ryan the suit because, you know, black people or whatever. Luke says no because Kate is is the best. Ryan gives the green shit back and says that it didn't even hurt her. She also says that she isn't the hero, Kate is, because everyone loves Kate. Budget is totally gone. No wonder this show dropped in like 80% of their ratings, I think. Then Blonde and Black Lightning talk about Kate. Black Lightning is still in love with her, everyone knows this. Sad music plays while the bat signal gets turned on and no one shows up. Kate left a letter they'd gone to retrieve earlier saying that she's Batwoman and in case of the letter being found, Kate is dead. She addressed the letter to Black Lightning yet made Blonde go and look for it instead to give it to Black Lightning. How the fuck did the CGI newspaper get down there? Oh no, there's a bad person after her. She has Mouse's corpse. She hugs him. She's monologuing while she's hugging a dead guy. She's so insane. Meanwhile, Ryan talks to her plant and doesn't seem to care that any villain could come after her at any moment or anything now that she has the suit. Human emotions are for humans. But she decides to show the audience her wound so we get to have a closer look and we see... Symbiote? Magic? Is this the vines from the ruins? Good book, by the way. I don't get it. That's it, I'm done. I can't do it. This is bad. Why? Oh boy. Are you ready for this channel to cover the rest of season 2? Because buckle your fuckles! This is gonna be a hell of a year.